when we seek the best for our children's future or the future of those who come behind us spiritually, are we truly seeking what's best for them or are our thoughts a little skewed? Because that can happen real easy, can't it? Uh, welcome to This Day Devo, Pastor Guy here, and today we begin uh, a short three-day journey through 2 Timothy. So this is Paul's second letter directly to Timothy, and this is in fact the final letter that Paul wrote, uh, In he wrote it from prison. So let me kind of just, as we get into this, just kind of so you can see what you're reading and why. So Paul uh, as we read about this in the book of Acts, and we were there on our journey through the New Testament, Paul kind of, he won release from imprisonment in Rome. And early tradition from the Christian church tells us that Paul then went on to preach in Spain for a while, but later the hostility to Christianity began to get even worse. And Paul was then arrested, and this time he did not survive uh, Christian history tells us that both Paul and Peter were um, were martyred. They were killed for their faith in uh, sometime in the 60s, A.D. 60s. So uh, that'd be roughly 30 years after Jesus was crucified and resurrected. And so um, what's happening in this letter is Paul is reaching out to young Timothy, and then he also will see... He reaches out to young Titus, two of the next generation of leaders in the Christian church. They were the the next man up. And so in this letter, what we get to see is really a famous last words, kind of uh, not really a, a, a memoir, but more like a, I can't, I can't really think of a specific word, but it's like a, 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 he's, he's passing on to Timothy and the, the last things that he wants him to know, these reminders that he wants to give him. And you can see this, you can see the, the, the heartfelt love for Timothy. And you can see the tears that Timothy cried in saying goodbye to Paul for what would potentially be his last time seeing him. And so this is really kind of a final famous last words of Paul with some direction and some warning and just those reminders that things are going to be difficult. There will be challenges in the faith, but you must remain totally committed. And so um, we can glean from this and find great value in this for our lives, not just uh, not just for today, but even as you look down the road, that someday there are torches that you're going to pass. And one of those torches that you're going to pass is the torch of faith, whether that's to children or grandchildren in um, uh, in you know in in your in your family, or if that's uh, kids and people that you're connected with, that you become a spiritual father to, or a mother to, or a, a mentor to, people you're walking with in the faith. And so there's this best wishes moment where, you know, Paul's really, he, he's encouraging Timothy and said, hey, I remember, you remember the faith of your mother? You remember the faith of your grandmother? I know that that faith lives in you. And what do you need to do with that, Timothy? Don't let it die. Don't let the candle go out. Don't let it be covered. What you need to do is you need to fan that into flame. You need to believe that what God has given you as you step out into this leadership role, Mr. Timothy, as you step out in your faith and you proclaim Jesus, I want you to know, Timothy, that God has not given you a spirit of fear, but he's given you a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of self-discipline and self-control. You can do this. And so in the same way for us, we must, must fan into flame the spiritual gift that God has given us. And so um, what I said at the beginning, when, when we seek the best for our children, and I know that we all do, when we seek the best for those coming behind us, and I know that we all do, we have to, we have to truly be seeking what's best for them. This is unbelievably hard to do because uh, we want nothing more than for our children or for the people that come behind us to have a good, comfortable, enjoyable life. 
We want their freedom. We want their peace. We want prosperity. We want to see them thrive. And yet, Paul's writing this letter to Timothy, and he's saying, hey, there is a hardening hostility towards Christians all across Europe. Be prepared. Be prepared. And he says that in, in the end of what we read today, he says, this is a trustworthy saying in proclaiming Jesus. If we die with him, we will live with him. If we endure hardship, he will reign, we will reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. But if we remain, if we're unfaithful, he remains faithful because he can't deny who he is. And so we fight the good fight of faith, knowing that sometimes being a Christian is countercultural. Sometimes being a Christian, it doesn't get you acceptance. Sometimes it leads to death. That's what happened for Paul. That's what happened for Peter. And countless, 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 innumerable Christians throughout the, throughout the generations have died because of their commitment to Christ. And so we must love him in that same way. And we must hope for the best for our kids and the next generation, even if that means laying their life down because we have eternal sight in mind. We have to. And we must remember that even Jesus said, if the world hates you, remember it hated me first. But he laid his life down for you. And he loves you. And so we love the same way. Um, but God, God bless you. Every I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Sent down from heaven as the power of Christ.